Well, hello, Year 10. Today we're going to look at um, cellular respiration. Given that you guys are stuck at home and I don't know what your internet connection is like for the meeting, I'm going to record this lesson and pop it up on um, the Google Classroom. Today I would like to go through basically as much as I can, but I'm going to limit it as well. I'm going to have a cutoff point. We're going to look at what is cellular respiration. We're going to look at what are heterotrophs. Um, I'd like to have a squiz at what a mitochondrion is and the inputs and outputs of cellular respiration and the overall worded and chemical equation that represents cellular respiration. In future lessons, we'll probably look at the three different stages of aerobic respiration and then the shortcut that we take when we don't have enough oxygen and aerobic respiration can't go ahead, which is anaerobic respiration. That's the one that makes your legs burn when you're running fast. All right, so this is all going up on the one note that I've already linked to you all, but I'll put up a fresh link. Um, we're looking at what is cellular respiration. Uh, most important thing to realize is that all eukaryotes do it, including plants. So while plants are unique in that they can photosynthesize while many other things can't, um, plants also do the cellular respiration stuff. The organelle that we associate it, with um, cellular respiration is the mitochondria. Um, and it's important because it gives us the energy to grow, move, reproduce, and repair, and all those Mrs. Gren things. And that energy comes in the form of something called adenosine triphosphate, which we more commonly call ATP. Now, ATP is a special molecule which is made of this adenine, adenine which is why it's called adenosine triphosphate. Um, it's got a ribose sugar to join it all together, and it's got one two, three phosphate groups. Now, in between each of these bonds, we've got a bucket load of energy. And to put that third phosphate on, because as you can see, there's a lot of negative charges. To put that third phosphate on, we um, have to throw a fair bit of energy into that bond. And um, when it gets broken, it releases a nice little burst of energy that our cells can readily harness. So this little uh, schematic shows you how ATP works. So this is the high energy form called ATP. We can see it's got one, two, three phosphate groups. When one of them releases, it um, pops out a little burst of energy and becomes ADP, which stands for adenosine diphosphate, because it's only got two phosphates. Now there's certain chemical reactions, such as cellular respiration, that can force that third um, phosphate group to join up again and create this higher energy form which will go off and do its business around the cell. All right, so ATP is the aim of the game. It's about getting energy to create that ATP so we can create that usable energy for our cells. Now, heterotrophs, which we are, basically is any organism that eats another organism to get that energy to create ATP. So we're talking about animals, we're talking about fungi, we're talking about most bacteria, many protists. Conversely, we've got other organisms called autotrophs, which use chemical energy, sorry, chemical reactions to get that energy. So typically we're looking at photosynthesis, which is what plants, some bacteria, some protists can do, algae, things like that. Um, and then there's some archaeobacteria that live down near volcanic vents that can do chemosynthesis. So they use some of the chemicals in their immediate environment to create that energy. So as discussed before, we've got to have a look at the mitochondria in itself. Um, the mitochondria is the organelle associated with this energy production that we're speaking about. And it's actually got a very specific structure. Now, this is what it looks like under an electron microscope, but this is what you do need to be familiar with for tests and exams. So it's got an outer membrane around the side and it sort of gives it like a a bean looking thing sometimes they're quite round and sometimes they're quite long um inside it's got all these folded up membranes going back and forth like that um and they form a structure called the cristae and in between in the lumen in the spaces in between all those folds is something called the matrix these two zones, the cristae and the matrix, are where different parts of cellular respiration occur. But we're not going to worry about that right now. What I might take you through is how to draw it 
should you need to draw it into a book or in a test. Okay, the best place to start is on the outside of the mitochondria. We just draw a simple circle or oval shape to be the outer membrane. Then we're going to focus on our inner membrane. I'm just going to do that in a different color. Um, and usually we just sort of go like that and then just show the folds. It ends up looking sort of like a comb. But again, we're just trying to show those folds, which of course we call the cristae. Okay, the other thing I probably need to worry about this stage is these spaces in the middle, uh, which I'm going to do my best to color in without going outside the lines. Um, and that is the matrix. Not where you'll find Keanu Reeves, but we still call it the matrix. And that's how you can badly, but still accurately, represent the mitochondria in your notebook. Okay, so when we look at the inputs of cellular respiration, we're taking in glucose and we're taking in water. And we're putting out, like you breathe out, whenever you breathe out, you breathe out carbon dioxide, and we also break down the glucose to make water. If you go back to the previous page on our OneNote, you'll remember that we talked about the inputs and outputs of photosynthesis, where plants need water, sunlight, and carbon dioxide for photosynthesis, and they give us oxygen and glucose. There's our worded equation, water plus carbon dioxide in the presence of light and the chloroplast gives us oxygen and glucose, and we had a balanced chemical reaction. When we're dealing with um, cellular respiration, it is essentially basically um, photosynthesis backwards. So when we put that equation in backwards, we're back to cellular respiration now, we can see that we've got oxygen and glucose give water, carbon dioxide, but where we had light energy floating above the arrow in the previous um, equation, we now put energy at the end in the form of ATP. And when we want to write a balanced equation, again, we're going back to 666 six, six, with um, six in front of the oxygen, one of the smaller molecules. There's a glucose, that large molecule already. Um, we're going to need six waters and six carbon dioxides. And of course, it creates ATP as well. So C, six oxygen, one glucose gives six water, six carbon dioxide and a bundle of ATP. Okay, so it's a very short lesson, um, but given that many of you might have left your notebooks at school and therefore can't transcribe notes today, and um, yeah, some of you just won't have access to the internet, we're going to keep it short. You guys can view this in your own time, of course, and um, we will very, very quickly review these notes when we're back in person in class. See you then.